Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Today we're talking about solving inequalities with addition and subtraction. We're also going to learn how to graph the inequality on a number line and also how to put the solution in set builder notation. So the first things that we need to make sure we know are the names of the different symbols. So this symbol here is, is less than. And I say is less than and not just less than because less than just those words means actually to subtract. But if I say is less than, then that means I'm talking about this inequality symbol. I can also say is fewer than as a possible option, um, but those are generally the phrases that we would use for this symbol. Something is less than something else. The opposite would be this symbol here. This symbol is greater than or is more than. So this is less than. Sometimes people give a silly trick and think that, hey, it looks like a capital letter L tilted to the side and you could you know, put that with less. I don't really talk about it like that. I just want you to get really comfortable with the symbols, which at this point you should know, but just in case you get them confused, make sure you practice maybe with some flashcards, just making sure you know those symbols correctly. Along with that, we have these symbols. This is, is less than or equal to. Now, I highlighted the less than part of the symbol in green, but I also wanted to show you that the equal to sign that I put in pink is kind of like a collaboration between the two. So this symbol here would be called is less than or equal to. Now, that symbol actually means I'm talking about any number that's less than that number, that number I'm talking about, or it can be equal to. It can meet one of those situations to make it a true statement. Another way to say is less than or equal to would be to say is at most or is no more than. Now, usually I always discuss with my students the two things that seem to always be the most important things to you guys, money and your grades. If you can revolve any inequality statement about money or grades, I promise you it makes sense. So if you said to me, hey, I need some money, and I said, okay, I can give you at most $10. That would mean that I'd be giving you less than or equal to $10. I wouldn't be giving you $12 or $13. Or if I responded to you and said, okay, I can give you no more than 10. Well, no more than 10 would mean 10 or less. The same thing is true for the opposite here. This is the greater than or equal to symbol. Notice it has both symbols attached into this one symbol. This is in blue, the greater than, and then it has the equal to in pink. So is greater than or equal to, or you can say is at least or is no less than. And again, if you equate these to money or grades, it kind of makes sense. Like how many times have you said, I need to get at least an 80 on that next quiz? Doesn't that mean you want an 80 or higher? Or I need at least $10, mom or dad or grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle. That would mean that you wanted 10 or more. That's greater than or equal to and is no less than means the same thing. If I said to you, um, I need no less than 20 bucks, that would mean that I want 20 or more. So now we're going to take those symbols and we're actually going to apply them. And the first thing that we're going to be taking a look at is what it means to put something in set builder notation after we set up the basic inequality. So here it says the sum of x and 3 is less than 8. So if I was to translate that into an inequality, it would look like this. The sum of x and 3 is less than 8. I would go ahead and subtract 3 on both sides. You solve it like you would a regular equation, and I get x is less than 5. That's my solution. Now, there's something called set builder notation, and set builder notation is a phrase. And it says the set of all x such that x is. Now, that may sound kind of crazy, like what am I even talking about right now? The set of all x? Well, here is what set builder notation looks like. It's the formal way we represent our solution. It starts with an open brace. You've learned how to write braces before. It's a curve, a point, and then a curve. We acknowledge the variable that we're using, and then we put a vertical bar. So right here, this says the set of all x such that and now, after the such that, we actually write what our inequality was, such that x is less than 5, and we do a close brace. Now, what I want you to notice, and I'm going to highlight it here, is that you know how we found this inequality as our solution? 
That was just our answer. Notice it's here. Everything else is just kind of extra around it. So the open brace, the closed brace, the X, and the vertical bar. And the X that's here is just simply whatever variable we were using. This is what set builder notation looks like. So then I would give you a number line and I'd ask you to go ahead and number an appropriate number line. Usually I'll tell my students whatever this number is, kind of just throw that in the middle of a number line. And then it's about graphing. Now, open circle and close circle on a number line, you have learned before, you should have seen before, but I'm going to remind you exactly of what that should look like. X is less than 5 would mean I would put an open circle at 5. An open circle at that number 5 means that 5 is not included in the solution set. For example, if I plug a 5 into this inequality, is 5 less than 5? No. It's not, but everything leading up to that five is part of the solution. Everything less than it should get shaded in. So I would shade the entire number line, including the arrow, and this is what the graph would look like. Now think about it, is two less than five? Yes, it's in the shaded region. Is three less than five? Yes, it's in the shaded region. Is four less than five? Yes, it's in the shaded region. Is five less than five? No, it's got an open circle. The open circle says this is where the solutions stop or end really or start any way you want to think about it. It's everything leading up to that point. And every single point here, so think about all the decimal values that are leading right up to five. Also think about every number in this arrow that's including your zero, your, all your negatives. Everything is less than five. Look at six, seven, eight. Those are all numbers that are not part of the solution set because they're not less than five. So anything in an unshaded region would not give you a true statement. Let's take a look at the next one. 5 subtracted from m is more than negative 11. So something we've already learned is the word from is a flipping word. So 5 subtracted from m should look like m minus 5. And then is more than would be our greater than symbol. And then negative 11. Let's go ahead and solve for m. Add 5 on both sides. Now, set builder notation, remember, looks like an open brace, the variable that we're looking at, and then a vertical bar. So it's the values of m such that m is greater than negative 6. That's what set builder notation looks like. I'm going to go ahead and put negative 6 in the center of my number line. It says m is greater than negative 6. So a greater than symbol also gets an open circle. That's because negative 6 is not greater than negative 6. But what is greater than negative 6? Is negative 7 greater than negative 6? Or is negative 5 greater than negative 6? Which part of this number line would actually get shaded in? Well, remember, when you have a number line set up, all the numbers to the right are always greater. Negative 5 is greater than negative 6. Negative 4 is greater than negative 6, and so on. All of these numbers to the left are actually less than negative 6 and would not be in that shaded region. Next one, the difference of b and 1 half, so difference means subtraction, so b minus 1 half, is at most 3 fourths. At most, that's a less than or equal to symbol. If I said to you I can give you at most $10, that means I can give you less than or equal to $10. Now, solving this inequality, we add 1 half on both sides. Remember, when you want to do 3 fourths plus 1 half, you need a common denominator, so you'd have to turn 1 half into 2 fourths. 3 fourths plus 2 fourths is 5 fourths. When we go ahead and put this in set builder notation, again, it's the open brace, B, vertical bar. We write down the inequality that we got as our solution. I'm going to go ahead and throw that 5 fourths into the center of my number line that I have here that it's just covered up right now. Um, I also put some decimal equivalents underneath just as like a marker for us. But B is less than or equal to 5 fourths. Now, this would actually be a case for a closed circle, a shaded circle. And that's because 5 fourths is part of the solution. Because less than or equal to means I need to show, have in the solution all the numbers that are less than 5 fourths and it also can be equal to 5 fourths. 
So a shaded circle tells me that it's included. Now here's also a hint. Anytime you have the equal to part in an inequality symbol, it's going to be a shaded in circle because equal to is going to be that included. And then everything less than 5 fourths would always be shaded to the left. Okay, last one. 10 added by n is greater than or equal to 12. So 10 added by n is greater than or equal to 12. Let's subtract 10 on both sides. We get n is greater than or equal to 2. We should now feel a little bit more comfortable with our step builder notation about what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and throw 2 into the center of my number line. Greater than or equal to. So greater than or equal to would mean at 2, I have a closed circle because 2 is equal to 2. That equal to part of the symbol says that 2 can be a part of the solution. And then everything that's greater than 2 gets shaded in, and it would be all of these numbers to the right. I have a few more translation problems here. I'm not going to go step by step through with them, but if you want to pause, copy these down, or at least translate and then solve them, you can, and then press play. Okay, otherwise I'm just going to show you the problems and then drag away and show you the answer. So it's up to you if you want to pause right now and give these a shot. Okay, so this would be the translation of what the inequality means, solving it, putting the solution in set builder notation, and then seeing the graphs. If you want to try the next two problems, it's the same thing. Give it a shot. You can translate into an inequality, solve the inequalities, and then I'll show you what the graph looks like. So if you want to pause, please do, and then press play when you're ready to see the answers. Here we go. And those are our results. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Bye.